Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, this is Monica Paolini from uh, Senza Fili, and uh, this is a conversation for uh, um, a report that I'm writing on uh, uh, RAN optimization and how is it changing now that networks are becoming more complex, uh, have a better performance, but uh, operators are also under increased pressure to provide better um, quality to their subscribers with, who are using their networks more and they're more demanding. Uh, so we're talking today with uh, uh, Kashif Hussein at uh, Viavi Solutions, and uh, he is the Solutions Marketing Manager there. And uh, uh, we're going to talk about how uh, run optimization is uh, uh, evolving um, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the mobile uh, area. Uh, Kashif, uh, thanks for having you here today. Thank you. So, uh, why don't we get started by talking about how, uh, what, well, first of all, what is it you're doing at um, uh, Viavi uh, Solutions uh, in terms of uh, optimizing the RAM? Um, okay, so uh, so Viavi Solutions, uh, we actually are the instrumentation business. Uh, formerly, we were uh, JDSU. Uh, we just rebranded as Viavi Solutions. All of our instrumentation side, which uh, deals with end-to-end products were, which, uh, which help the customer to manage, integrate, and optimize their network from an end-to-end -end perspective. And I say end-to-end, -end, it means from the core all the way from the IMS all the way to the RF link. So we help our customers to deliver solutions which can help them, uh, again, manage, integrate, commission, and optimize the network. Now on the RAM aspect of it, what I'm responsible for is the wireless side. Um, basically products like Cell Advisor, RAN Advisor, TrueSight, we have a new uh, new uh, product coming out, Rubix, which is a real-time uh, post-processing optimization solution. So I'm responsible for all that, all those products, basically delivering the ability for the customers to optimize their network uh, in a real-time basis. Mm -hmm. So if we can sort of provide a, a quick overview of what are the main changes, the, the top-level changes uh, that as the network evolves, what is that we're doing differently in terms of optimizing the RAM? Because we've been optimizing the RAM forever, but now there are specific challenges that operators are uh, starting to face right now. Yeah, uh, just like you said, RAM optimization has been there from day one. I mean, and the, the difference that we see as the networks uh, continue to grow, uh, the density of the network is growing. Before, we used to have a macro cell, a macro cell where you had a radio at the base of the tower and antenna at the top and you had coax cables going between them, right? And uh, macro networks coverage area is much larger. Their power transmit is about 43 dBm in general, right? Now what we are seeing as more and more data demand is increasing and as we know that the most of the data is utilized in building, more than 70% of the data is coming from in-building users. So networks uh, are uh, basically going ev evolving in the direction of uh, small cells, uh, DAS. I mean, we already knew femtos were already out there, but we see a considerable growth of these smaller networks. As these smaller networks continue to grow, they need to be managed. And the scale is very different now. Before you would see maybe in a much larger uh, metroplex area, hundreds of cell sites in a year, right? Now we are talking about thousands of cell sites. Now for, a, for when you are launching thousands of small cells, it means that your RF environment is constantly changing. It's not uh, a function of a week or two weeks. It can be changing daily because you're bringing in new more, more and more cell sites. So now that with the, this larger scale, what you cannot do is keep on sending drive test teams out there and walk test teams. So you need to, built in auto and automate some of the functions. As we already see in the industry with 3GPP, SON is there to help with that, like ANR feature, automated, uh, automated uh, neighbor relations or determination of the PCIs, or scrambling codes basically. So along those lines, we are complementing uh, all, all those available tools that are out there with our solution where it can help customers to do it in a much shorter and much more streamlined fashion. And I will talk more in detail about our new solution like Rubix, which is a real-time solution. So today, if you take the example of a DAS, if somebody has to go and optimize a DAS, I mean, the steps that uh, need to be taken, though trivial, but they take a lot of time. For example, somebody has to walk the whole venue, upload the data, 
somebody has to download the data at the back office, uh, post-process the data, analyzes and determine whether there's some changes are needed, was there an antenna not turned on, something was missing, and based on that information, they have to take certain actions. Maybe call the construction crew back to the site uh, to re-optimize or whatnot, right? I mean, as you can imagine, sometimes these uh, in-building environments like convention centers and what have you are uh, require access. So it may take days to go back to the site. With Rubik's, a solution like that, as you are walking the site, for example, guess what? The data is autom automatically loaded up to the network, post-process, reports are ready, and right there an engineer anywhere in the world can log in. Wherever they are walking, they can just log in and see how the data looks like. If there is something missing, for example, there are certain tools built in. We have the antenna tool, which tells you oh, whether you have a missing antenna or the antenna is not working or it's not transmitting at the right level, it should be. So you can take actions right away. So we believe in taking actions right away, saving time and money for our customers. So this yes. is just one example and application of it. And, and this is all relying on data that it's uh, real data from real networks. It's not simulated. Uh, so there is there seems to be a shift towards uh, collecting data in real time, real data, real amount, and to be able to process, as a consequence, huge amounts of data and act on it uh, uh, right away instead of keeping it to a lab condition, which is the traditional way of this, yeah, so th this is not like that you have, um, back in the day, yeah, when you used to bring a site on air, you used to have something like a loading function in OCNS, orthogonal channel noise simulation, you used to la add load to the network and do testing and all that stuff. Here we are talking about real users. Uh, however, in addition to that, uh, Viavi is also working on, uh, we have an Ariso Geo platform. The, our Ariso Geo platform is uh, truly as the users, not, not even a tester, it's real-time users who are in the network. It is collecting only the RF information as the, uh, as the users make phone calls, they download data, I mean layer three up to layer three information which shows how the call was getting connected and whatnot is all uploaded and we, do, we have an analytical engine behind it which does the analysis and can tell you what the hotspots are, so where the interference issues are all those problems and uh, and within a distance of a building you can figure that out so it is quite accurate real time at the same time it actually is taking the actual user's experience and actual user ex uh, application experience so those things are also there that we have uh, built and we are working on with our uh, customers to further modify them to get them uh, to make them easier for our customer to optimize the network on a real time basis yeah, and I guess that you're trying to address a real challenge here because what operators really care about is the quality of experience, uh, making sure that their subscribers are happy about the service that they're receiving. And uh, it's something that at the same time, it's very difficult to capture because the, the KPI that we have traditionally, they help, but they don't necessarily pinpoint what is, what if there is a problem with QOE or where is the problem. And, and so you need a lot of data to try to understand where the problem is coming from in the first place, or if there is a problem. And uh, I guess you can, you can have operators to, to address that, uh, that type of challenge. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, for example, um, I mean, I'll just take a use case. For example, interference is one of the big issues. And as these networks continue to grow, you will see more and more interference, right? We have built solutions using our Aristio platform and Cell Advisor platform to help customers identify interference issue in a much quicker manner with our Ariso platform, what we have taken, we take this, uh, we, we take the uh, real-time data, we show where are the hotspots where interference is, we can pinpoint that and using our cell advisor solution, we literally uh, triangulate on, on where the interference issues are. So this is one of the examples where you can quickly identify uh, interference issues. Again, you have to remember interference, for example, if you're trying to um, optimize that in a network, it is a three-step process. It's first, you have to find out if there is interference, if that's the source of your problem. Secondly, detect where the interference is. And third, for example, you can get a general idea of where the interference location is, and then you can pinpoint, is isolate that interference issue, what was the source of the interference. So customers need to do all of these things. Now, the challenge is in a much larger scale. 
So you have to do it in a much shorter time frame. Otherwise, now the cell site in the network, which used to be, let's say, back in the day when you have an MSC and a BSC and you had cell sites of, like, let's say, hundreds. Now you're talking about very small cells in thousands. I mean, when customers have to add thousands of cell sites, they need faster solution for optimization, deployment, and everything. And that's what Viavi's view is, Viavi Solutions view is, that we want to offer solutions where customers can quickly implement and deploy their network and optimize their network. So they can be ahead of the game where they have always enough capacity available for their users and delivering the best QoE. Yes, and you know, this, this, is, this is also, again, challenging because you're doing this in real time because otherwise, as you say, uh, you, you're dealing with a problem after the fact. You need to deal with the problem when it arises. And you have to deal with a lot of data because there's so, so many variables to take care of. So you need to have a, 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 an end-to-end -end platform because you don't know where the problem is. You don't know if it's, it's interference or if it's something in the core, what, what's going on. So um, you need an end-to-end -end platform, real-time managing a lot of data. Isn't that um, a little bit overwhelming? Uh, I know that some operators think, oh my God, this is so much data that we have to deal with. It's going to be a nightmare. How, how do you deal with the nightmare of the being submerged by all the detail of data that you they have there? Yeah, I mean, you, you're right. I mean, that's the reason we believe in a smart solutions. It's not anymore that you can just send uh, thousands of people out in the field collecting data and optimizing it. I mean, that's the reason we, just like you said, we have to look at it end to end. It cannot be, and it has to start from the point of inception when you think about deploying a cell site. Um, am I deploying a small cell at the right place? Our a resource solution can help you with that. Then when the next step is, okay, when I have deployed it, have I tested and certified each and every link? For example, is my backhaul is the problem for, uh, I mean, uh, for network issue? Is my fiber a problem? Because now you're connecting all these fiber links between the baseband unit and the radio units. Or is it my RF link? I mean, we cover all those aspects. We have a cell advisor, which helps with the, uh, with the fiber and the coax cable deployment. We have backhaul assurance solution. Uh, we, we offer FTTA, which is fiber certification, right? And on the RF side, we have our RAN optimization solution, which is like our two-side solution and the real-time solution Rubik's I talked about. And to get further uh, insight into uh, a packet's life, we have our X-side solution, which can show you, which can show you uh, how the packet, where, while it is traversing from the core of the network all the way to the RF link, if I'm seeing any problem with any of the nodes, whether it is an IMS node, whether if it's a core node, any of the SGSN or, I mean, SGWs or PGWs. So basically, we, we, we provide that insight to the customer from the real traffic to figure out where the problems are. Now, when, when you do this, and again, we, we talk about you have to do it in real time, but what does real time mean? Because if you are too coarse, you don't capture the, variable, the fluctuations in the, in the network. But if you are too granular, then you, you get too much caught into something that is not really, it's just a fluctuation in the network. So what, what is the right point, the sweet point in, in doing that? So I'll give you an example of our Rubik solution. Mm -hmm. so, so the key thing is you have to uh, realize that everybody wants real time, right? Real time comes with a cost like we just uh, talked about. How much data can I, can I be uh, transferring at the same time? If you look at the layer three information in, in, in the RF world we are talking about, there's tons of data that you can be generating. If you try to send all that data over the RF link, you, you can become the source of contention when there is a game going on. We don't do that. What we do is basically we capture all the data, we save it, but we only transfer the necessary data in real time. And we, when I say real time, we are not talking about hours or 30 minutes. We're talking about few minutes in which over the air link, we send this basic KPIs like accessibility, throughput, and uh, retainability, basically drop call access failures and things like that, back to our uh, cloud-based system, which calculates all these KPIs and which can create all these plots in real time. When I say real time, we are talking just minutes here not 30 minutes or hours. And if you are in a bad RF environment, you walk away, in, uh, in, you walk into a bad RF environment and that, and that, of course, at that instant of time, that data may not be sent. But as soon as you get back in, 
that data starts coming back again and you complete the whole picture. So you have still a complete picture of how your venue or how your in, uh, in-building environment was. Mm-hmm. Right, and, and, and that, that's, uh, that, that's quite important. Now, um, Sony is also trying to optimize the, 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 the RAN uh, as well. How do, how do your, your solutions work in relationship with, uh, with sound solutions out there? Yeah, I mean, uh, just as uh, discussed, right? I mean, SON is essential now, and there is a reason 3GPP put it in there, because if you're bringing these thousands of cell sites in a network, you cannot rely on manually adding each and every cell site. I mean, for example, take the scale, if you have to add 10,000 cell sites in a month, uh, or, or in a year for that matter, so that's about a thousand cell sites, almost close to that in a month. If you have to do that, and if the deployment time for one small cell is, let's say, a week to two weeks, we are talking about hundreds of teams in the field. That is not possible. That's why we have uh, insomnia features like ANR, and we have uh, basically automated uh, automation of PCI and identification of the cell site. However, this is not the complete picture. We have to look at uh, as when we talk about SOM, we have to look at the complete picture. That's why. We need to integrate solutions which can take the, the overall network experience, basically looking into each and every application, how each and every application is behaving, not just looking at the RF side of it, but taking into account how each and every user get, is getting a field experience and based on that, providing that insight to the customer to make decisions where how to control the RF, I mean, how if I have to add more neighbors or anything like that. Things like that where our, we as uh, Viavi are offering is our Ariso Geo solution, the platform. It helps complement to, uh, to the SON solution. And we, we call it Ariso SON actually. And that actually uh, complements the current industry SON solution just from taking from the RF, taking it to the next level where now we are offering and, uh, and integrating the application piece of it. Yes, and so so this this is this is quite important. So it's all coming together, d- different levels of analysis. Because again, in order to understand, this is a very complex problem. If there is a problem on the QE, and you need to understand where it is, so that you need multiple parts to work uh, uh, together. Um, now, what were you hearing from uh, uh, mobile operators? Because a few years back, they were really. Um, the whole, you know, real time dealing with the real time network data it was something that we're very uh, unused to. They would just get their data, you know, weeks afterwards. Historical data for the reporting, the KPIs were for reporting, not so much for acting in in real time. Um, do you think that the operators have changed their attitude, the the, you know, their perception of uh, real time uh, analysis, and uh, why? I, I actually. Um... The historical data still has some significance and value because whenever you are planning a network, right, you have to look at it, how the trends are, how my, I mean, if I am uh, year over year, how my network is growing, how my data utilization is growing and all that stuff. So that still is, holds uh, a huge importance for the operator that will continue to be that way. However, the reason for the real-time solutions that the customers are looking for is from a, a end of user experience. I mean, we have to realize Customers pay a lot of money, and nowadays they have a lot of choices to go from one network to another. I mean, I mean, if you look at the ARPU that we are, we command in in uh, in North America is significant, and for that, customers demand uh, a great quality network. If you don't get that, um, basically they will switch to somebody else, and and operators understand that. As a result, they have more focus on 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 real time optimization. Uh, a lot of companies, tier one operators in the U.S., they implemented. Uh, real-time optimization uh, optimization solutions in their network, especially for the macro side of it. There are some challenges on the small side. That's where we play a vital role because in the small cells, you do not um, get the true, because there can be one uh, remote radio and multiple antennas associated with that remote radio. So identifying which antenna or which link fail is still a little bit of a challenge from the true uh, BSC and RNC-based solution. That's where we come in and we offer these uh, streamlined optimization solution. Uh, however, as you see in the industry today where uh, every operator is going, they realize the importance of real-time optimization, and that's why they are already focusing much more heavily on the real-time rather than the t- traditional methods of collecting data and taking actions in a few days or a few weeks or something like that. 
Yeah, and, and I guess that when you have a head man with multiple layers, the, the different layers interact with each other. So macro performance might be affected by small cell performance. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, co-channel deployment. So um, interference become even a more complex issue because it's not just neighboring cells, it's cells at different layers on top of the neighboring ones. So it becomes much more complex to manage. Yeah, yeah absolutely. If you think about it this way, even in the standards, I mean, the new features that are being uh, deployed, right? I mean, if you, uh, if you take into account, uh, when we talk about the ANR feature, we talk about CRE, where, I mean, you are actually um, managing the load on the traffic too. Because as we understand, when you have layers of cell sites, macro cell sites from a UE perspective is, is on the downlink is always stronger, right? Versus the small cell, because the power transmitted by a macro is 43 dBm, compared to like, I mean, few hundred milliwatts to uh, one or two watt maybe on a small cell. As a result, a mobile has, I mean, a tendency, I would say, per algorithm that it should be switching to the, uh, I mean, uh, to basically the macro. The, the key challenge with that is you have deployed a cell site. Are you really taking a, a true ROI of that cell, uh, cell site? I mean, so guess what? So we have, I mean, we have features in 3GPP which actually bias the user basically to stay on a smaller cell. Now this causes interference. Now that's where we come in. That's where we have to identify these sources of interference. Are there true interference sources? Do we have to manage or optimize the cell site? Reduce the coverage of macro maybe? Maybe not. But do I have to increase uh, the coverage of the small cell? Do I have to change the direction of the antenna? Do I have to... Uh, have the proper handoffs set up our thresholds between the macro and the small cell. So all those things have to be considered in this world. And the funny thing is the scale has changed as we always talk about. It's not about like few cell sites, like 10 or 20. We are talking about hundreds of cell sites that you may not even know as an operator in some cases. Like for example, femtos and stuff like that, right? I mean, when we talk about head net, head net it can be a femto, it can be a metro, it can be a Pico cell. I mean, it, it, it truly depends. In some in most cases, operators know where the cell sites are. In some cases, they may not know. So that's where you have to have smarter solutions to help you optimize network and identify these sources of interference. I mean, I just talked about our, um, we have a feature in our cell advisor, we call it the REN PI and REN IL. Basically, you identify the interference uh, location through that using our ARISO platform, which can pinpoint the core areas where you will have interference issues uh, using your drop call information and interference and signal to noise ratio, and it can plot it on the chart, and then you can do triangulation to figure out where those interference locations are. So customer need those smarter solutions to quickly identify and isolate these issues. And now, uh, as I say, it's just the, 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 the proliferation of equipment out there that forces an operator to automate. But there is also a cost element there because an operator wouldn't do it unless there is a cost saving. Where, where is the cost saving mostly coming from when you do this sort of uh, uh, more, let's say, more aggressive run optimization, real time, end to end, uh, uh, and automated? So you look, we have to look at it costs from a couple of standpoints. One is the cost of losing a user, number one. Number two, the, I mean, you cannot demand that much ARPU and keep on providing, uh, I mean, not uh, optimal service, right? And the second is, if you have deployed a small cells, are you truly using those small cells? We believe, uh, I mean, when you are thinking about deploying a small cell, first you need to identify where the small cells should be deployed. So that's where you need to find uh, solutions like location intelligence solution like an ARISO, which can truly tell you where the hotspot is. This is where I need to, for example, in a big area, in a macro area, this is the location where I need to put the small cell so that I can offer the best ROI of that cell site. Because if I deploy the small cell and it is not taking much traffic, just because I believe it is in a mall and certain place, it may not be true. And you may have made an investment which may not be giving you a better return. That's why it is essential to get a best return. First, identify where you need to put the cell site, the small cell. Secondly, once the small side, the cell site is there, you need to optimize it to make sure it is truly taking the traffic that you spent money for. Uh, unless, I mean, otherwise what's going to happen is basically a small cell may be providing coverage, but users may still be going to the macro cell and you may, may not be truly utilizing uh, the, I mean, the, the investment that you made. Uh, and it can impact the overall QOE of all the users on the macro cell. 
because the, the users who are in the periphery, who are supposed to be using the macro cell, and the user who are supposed to be using the small cell, they're all on, on macro. Now, which causes contention, and let's say I'm watching a video and now I cannot watch a video in good quality just because there are too many users there. So, so, so customers have to manage, first of all, the investment I made, am I using it right? Secondly, if I am not using it right, then am I causing a QOE issue? If I'm causing a QOE issue, again, I'm going to have a churn. And that churn means I cannot demand that ARPU that I was before. So it's a, it's a, it's a balancing act that they have to play and they have to be careful where to deploy cell sites and how to manage their current network. Yes, that, that, and that's, uh, that's really important. Now, uh, I have a final question for you. Uh, what is it you are at the VIV working on right now? What is that we should expect? What are the hot areas that still need to be addressed? Well, it's a top secret. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, we are uh, constantly working with our customers. Like I said, I mean, we are focusing primarily on moving away from traditional. Uh, I won't say we are all completely moving away because those networks have to be managed. Those networks are already deployed out there. But we are enhancing our solutions. Like we said, in a, uh, offering solutions which are real time, cost effective for the customer. For example, our Rubik solution I just talked about, which significantly reduces cost if you look at it from an in-building and DAS perspective. We have use cases to offer that. We are adding more and more uh, stuff on our instrumentation into the cloud to make it easy for the customer. For example, I'll give you an example. Uh, in a DAS scenario, where you have a lot of fiber going between the head end and to the remote radios, right? So all of that stuff has to be certified and tested, and multiple parties are involved. So we are streamlining that, putting it in the cloud. So any customer or any member of that customer team, for example, meaning a, a, a contractor, a venue operator, uh, I mean, uh, basically a service provider or a construction crew guy, they can all have access to as the test, what tests needs to be done, um, uh, how the results are, whether the site is ready and all that stuff, that all is happening in real time. Meaning as soon as I test my fiber, certify it, guess what? Results gets directly uploaded, directly from the tool. Uh, I mean, a technician does not even have to take an action. So we are doing that for even for our fiber product, for our coax product. That just streamlines the whole process. So you don't have to wait, oh, whether the sweep, sweep tests and the PIM tests were done. Oh no, it's all, when you, as soon as you do it, it gets up, uploaded right there and everybody has access. So it just saves time and money. So we are looking at solutions which can streamline the overall process of optimization, deployment and, uh, and integration of cell sites. Doesn't matter what kind of cell site it is. Very good, sounds very exciting and uh, also sounds a lot of tough thank work uh, ahead. Um, well, uh, thank you so much uh, Kashif for uh, your time, uh, for sharing your thoughts with us uh, today. And uh, uh, th this, is, uh, uh, this was a conversation uh, for uh, the report on run optimization. And the report is available on RCI Wireless News uh, uh, website and on Sensapedia website. And this report uh, uh, was written in collaboration between Sensapedia and RCI Wireless News. Kashi, thanks a lot again for Thank being here. Thank you very much, Take care.